Hey guys, let's get started and talking about method overloading. So before we get started, remember our goal in mind is to always have clean code and method overloading is going to help us out and eventually we'll have more goals. But for now, method overloading. So what method overloading allows us to do is to make the strict computer be a bit less strict or at least visually less strict. So when we code, we could do more with less. But to be able to do more with less, we have to do a bit of work. So what is method overloading? Well, so far when we've been printing and I said, you know, let's say print a, a number, an integer, or print a string, or print a, I don't know, true or false, etc. You'll notice that I'm calling the same method here, right? This is a method. The, the stuff in front, we'll talk about it later. But for now, this method, println, took an integer as a parameter. It took a string as a parameter and a Boolean as a parameter. And for it to be able to do that, we need to play around with it. Because normally, when you define, when you define your method, you specify what parameter you're allowing. So if I'm allowing an integer, it shouldn't be possible to have a string or a boolean or any other type. But what method overloading would allow us to do is this, as we see here. So the same name, but with different parameters. Okay, so let's get started. Let's see how it works. Let's see how we could make it work for us. <clears throat> the first thing would be, let's go to the definition of this print ln that we see here. To do that, you're going to hold down control. And you're going to click on print ln. If you're on the Mac, it should be uh, the alt or the command. I can't remember by heart. So when you hold down and you click on it, it will bring you to the <clears throat> method definition of print ln. And you can see over here, it shows me the definition, right? The body of that print ln. But you can see here that the parameter is integer x. Whoa. Let's, do, let's go back for one second. We have integer, that's the one I clicked on, but there's a string and a Boolean. How did the string or Boolean go in there? Well, if we go back here, you'll notice that if we scroll down a little bit, another print ln is there with long, right? Notice the code is most likely, well, in this case, it's exactly the same thing, right? We scroll down, now we could see float. Scroll down, print ln double character array so this is where our string might come in uh or a string is has it itself etc etc object and i think that was the last one yeah and you could see this method is actually repeated many times how many times let's do it ourselves so system dot out print ln and notice that when i type the whole print ln here, our IntelSense is showing us all the definition of that uh, method name. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten or eleven. I might have miscounted. Three, six, nine, ten. So we got ten. And you can see the last one doesn't even take a parameter. They've done this overloading. So that the programmer, us, when we program, it's much simpler to remember one method name rather than have a specific one for each. So what does that mean? Let's try and recreate this for ourselves. So if I'm going to create a method, I'm going to do public static void. For now, I'm going to keep it easy. And we're going to say print, right? The same thing. We could even write print ln. And we're going to take the first thing. I'm going to write an integer in there, and let's say that's x. And when I get that integer inside my body, I'm basically just going to push it to there. And it's pretty straightforward. So now this 32 inside my main code will just become println32. Right? Much cleaner because I have less of this shenanigan to write. Cool. That print ln32 works out fine. What if I do print ln and I add ASD? Now it doesn't work. I'll have to make it string accessible. Okay, 
So you go here and you change it to string. But the moment I do that, the second one works, but now the 32 has a red underscore saying, hey, integer is not a string. This is not fixing it. Well, I could go ahead and create another method. And I'm going to say in this one, print ln string, where I take a string x. And again, I'm going to just do putting it inside. So now here I could say print ln string, and I could rename this one to print ln integer. The only problem with that is, well, we're going to have to remember many names. And we did good because we put the verb at the beginning. We could just put the ending as integer, double, etc. But we're making our work more hard. Um, there's some stuff that we can't see here at the level we're learning right now. But it becomes problematic when we have many definitions of doing the same task in many different places. Meaning if I ever have to change one, I have to go and change every location that is there. So what we want to do is make our code clean and kind of in the same place, concise. Um, but we want it to always have kind of the same name because they're always doing the same thing, right? It's much easier to say print ln, print line, an integer. Print, print line string, a string is a bit harder to read. I like to put the method name with the parameter to kind of define what it says or means. So it's much easier for me to read print line integer, print line string. Okay. So to be able to do that, well, it's pretty simple. We're just going to take off that string in the front. And there we go. It's pretty much done. So here we could put this thing. I'm going to go into details in a second. I'm just going to clean up this little tint bit. We're going to do the same thing for our Boolean. And we also need one for no methods, right? We have that here, right? This one, which is just printing a new line. It's perfectly fine. So we have to kind of have these two as well as that one. So how can we do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You notice we're just, the only thing we're doing is we're changing the parameters that's in there and that's it. And this is called method overloading. Now, method overloading, you need to kind of know the rules. It's gonna help you out when we get to, let's say something much more complicated or we go to different languages. And we're gonna have our last one, which takes no parameters. Sorry, I'm thinking too much. All right, and this is that, right? So how is it possible to do this? Well, we need to learn some terminology here. The first thing is our method has something called a method signature. This is how, let's say, the compiler registers these methods and understands who they are, where they are, etc. So every method needs to have a different method signature. This is the important part. What is included in that method signature varies from, um, varies from language to language. So let's say in a C++ language, or let's say in a different language, uh, part of, let me actually take my pen here, part of the method signature would be the return type. Return type. The name, obviously, if the name is not the same, well, you cannot overload. Well, it's not going to be called overload. It would just be a different method. And the parameters, as many as you have, okay? You could have many of these parameters. These three things are normally in most languages as the method signature. Now, because we're learning Java, inside Java, the only two things that are part of the method signature is the parameters and you need to have the same name so really the only thing you could actually modify or change is these parameters that we have as you see here meaning that if 
if ever, let's say, let me erase a little bit. If ever two methods with the same name have the same parameters, it will give you a bug because then you won't know which one to call. So let's say if this one's an int and this one's an int, you'll notice here I got an error. Well, now it's going to say because it's already defined. We already defined what it is and you're trying to define it again so we can't do it. But if we go ahead and we change this by any way, by adding or removing some parameters or by changing the type of the parameter, then it would be considered as something else like this, right? So with this, whoopsie, with this method overloading, we're allowed to have the same name, but methods that take different things and could also have different body right we're not restricted to changing the definition of the body the same way we saw that inside println so println let me erase some stuff on my screen so println here you could see it has a parameters and x and then over here again overloaded with long and if we go through them they're closely similar to each other right sometimes we're converting them to string sometimes we're not and even sometimes we're calling doo -doo 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 -doo. where's my first printer sometimes we're calling something different cool so this will ensure we have better cleaner code by repeating the same thing now what becomes really interesting as a developer is i don't need to know which one i'm calling because they're all doing the same thing they're all printing a value of sorts integer string or boolean or in this case an empty line right and because of that my my, uh, my process of coding becomes much more intuitive faster and much cleaner all right i'll see you guys in the next video cheers